How can you support the local Lancaster community? That's what this show is all about. Coming to you from the dream room at Gardner's Mattress and More, Lancaster Connects is brought to you by the Sleep Better book right over my shoulder. You can get the Sleep Better book. The other shoulder. Right. You can get the Sleep Better book by going to gardenersmattressandmore.com. We'll mail you a free copy. Just go to gardenersmattressandmore.com and we'll get you your very own copy of Sleep Better. What's going on in your world, Jeff? You know, I'm hurting today. <laughs> <laughs> I, I got a knot in my back from basketball this morning. Why are you hurting? My hurting pains are far more uh, captivating and glorious than yours. <laughs> than my basketball. So as you know, I got back into Brazilian jiu-jitsu years ago. I competed you know, pretty significantly, trained very often, was far more flexible and uh, malleable. Age has hindered. A age has hit. <laughs> and uh, last night I discovered my knee was left knee, which has had... Nine knee operations yeah. is not nearly as malleable as it once was. <laughs> but here we are. We're malleable. Yeah. Today, yeah. This week's a malleable week. We've it been is. Busy. It's been a busy week. We yeah. continue to be um, blessed with traffic uh, in our doors. And man, it's, it's, uh, it's been great. Yeah, People are uh, ready to improve their sleep. That's a very good thing. Uh, I wouldn't be able to be here getting back on the mats if I wasn't sleeping well. That's, that's true. Not a self-serving statement. Very much true. Yep. Yep. Very much true. So we've got uh, some great guests coming up. We've got Linda Charles from Help the Fight. Uh, John Hockley from Weaver Associates is here. Uh, we are, uh, we have uh, what's going on in and around Lancaster. Uh, we've got our photo contest update. I've got a quick tip for you on how to sleep better. Uh, We're going to talk about food trucks, uh, as always, where they are. Uh, when they'll be where they are. Um, we'll also talk about how you can help your neighbors by joining the Lancaster Connects community and also how you can help uh, nonprofit uh, organizations. Um, and we got a couple of things people can do uh, in that segment, including uh, important volunteering uh, opportunities or opportunity. Yep, and I've got a local history nugget for you. Uh, we'll introduce you to our pet of the week, Rusty. Rusty. And, yeah, Rusty. And of course, uh, another local restaurant gift card uh, giveaway. I, th I think my goal is to try to to weave a Seinfeld reference into every sure, every podcast. Every podcast should be every day. <laughs> well, that, you know me; that that's normal. <laughs> yeah, yeah. Hey, remember this show is also available as a podcast. Find the links at LancasterConnects.com. Please like and share this video. You can leave a comment, tell a friend about this show. We would love to have you do that. So right now, welcome, uh, Linda Charles from Help the Fight Now and John Hockley from Weaver Associates. Welcome to the show. Good morning. Good morning. Thank you for having us. Yeah, glad you're here. Glad you're glad you're here joining us. Um, so we're going to run down some of our local events, uh, if that's all right, and then we'll uh, see what you think about them. If any might pique your interest, you can share what interests you. All right, so showing now through December 23rd, <clears throat> Queen Esther at the Sight and Sound Theater. Stories of the Old Testament come to life through magnificent sets, special effects, and live animals. Show times are 11, 3, and 7. Uh, the Sight and Sound Theater is located at 300 Hartman Bridge Road, uh, Rocks, Pennsylvania. Website, sight-sound.com. It's really great that they're doing events again and, and uh, being able to produce their shows. It's just an amazing, if you've never been to the Sight and Sound Theater, um, obviously take the, take the whole family, take friends. It's, it's an amazing uh, production that they put on. And it's, it's kind of crazy that it happens right here in our backyard. Yeah. Um, Mom's Pretzels. This sounds like a great uh, thing. Uh, grand opening and ribbon cutting for Mom's Pretzels at the Kitchen Kettle Village kind of down the road from uh, Sight and Sound a little bit, uh, is May 1st uh, is their grand opening. Uh, from 1045 to 1245, there's fun family activities, local music and entertainment um, at Mom's Pretzels opening in the Kitchen Kettle Village. Also going on at Kitchen Kettle Village, mm -hmm. picnic tasting tour, May 1st. 
This is a self-guided tour that allows you to sample foods at your own speed. 8.30 to 11 o'clock at Kitchen Kettle. Kitchen Kettle is, of course, located at 3529 Old Philadelphia Pike in Intercourse. And you can find more info on the picnic tasting tour at kitchenkettle.com. So we've talked about Phantom Power before. That's a uh, an event center um, or a place in uh, Millersville, um, just off uh, Millersville University campus. Uh, on April 30th, they've got Fandemic, uh, which is featuring musical guests Wallace, the POF, and get ready for it, Big Boy Brass. That sounds like it's right up my alley. Uh, they do uh, funk, R&B, and uh, New Orleans jazz. Um, also at Phantom Power, you got Tractor Jerry and Mud Bucket. These band names are awesome. <laughs> <laughs> um, that's going to be uh, May 1st uh, at 6 p.m. Uh, Tractor Jerry and the Mud Bucket, they are a local alternative dash country band. There they are on the screen. Um, Phantom Power is located uh, in Millersville, uh, 121 West Frederick Street. And you could visit phantompower.net to check out their uh, calendar schedule. We've got a couple events at TELUS 360, April 28th, 8 to 1030, live in the temple at TELUS 360. Popular local new wave musicians, Shea Queen and the guests. If you don't know, TELUS 360 is located 24 East King Street in downtown Lancaster. If you want more information, you can call them 717-393-1660 or go to TELUS360.com forward slash events. And I got one more, Ben. What's that one? We do? Oh, yeah. I flipped my page too early. <laughs> See, we don't do this for memory. <laughs> Rely on reading. Yes. Uh, April 30th, that's coming up from 6 to 8, uh, live on the rooftop at Telus 360. You can go on the roof, uh, look out over the city. Typically uh, where rooftop events are held. Yes, I, I appreciate that. Thank you. Uh, John Smith's Voyages. <laughs> they are a charismatic theatrical rock band. Kind of sounds like um, Queen, maybe? You know, they were theatrical uh, rock band. I would have went Monty Python with music. Ah, uh, there you go. Yep, yep, yep. Uh, coconuts. Sure. Right? Yep. Um, Tell us 360 is located at 24 East King Street in Lancaster, and you can get more information at tellus360.com. And remember, this show also available as a podcast. Again, you can find the links at LancasterConnects.com. And don't forget to like and share this video. Leave a comment. Tell a friend about this show. We would greatly appreciate it. Linda, John, anything uh, interesting there that uh, you'd like to attend, think about, brought to your attention, found unique? I was just in Millersville yesterday and saw the sign for Phantom Power. So when you brought cool. it up, but it, cool. yeah, it's it's great. It's it's great. You know, and we were I did about. not get a good night's. Yeah, I did not get a good night's rest like you two gentlemen did last evening. <laughs> so I think I need to go to Garner's. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, we might know a guy that can help. <laughs> John, what about um, you? You're a man about. Yeah, I, I will. I will uh, uh, second the sentiment on uh, Sight and Sound Theater. A uh, buddy of mine's one of the actors down there, uh, so I get in to see him a lot. But um, definitely a family-friendly atmosphere. Um, you know, if you can get into some of the ones that have the live animals, you know, get the elephants on stage. It's pretty crazy. Um, mm -hmm. Of course, Telus 360, you know, is is a great place downtown, and you know. Um, Phantom Power, the old point of view in Millersville, used to live right across the street from that. So some, some good memories from that place. So good job. <clears throat> that po The point of view theater was where the same guy took your ticket or, you know, you, you bought your ticket from was the same guy that ran the concessions and also the same guy that uh, hit the start button on the movie. It was yep. a great, great experience. Old, old timey uh, theater experience. Nice, nice. Well, Linda... Uh, thanks for joining us. We have Linda Charles on uh, the show today. She is the president and founder of Help the Fight. And so welcome, Linda. We appreciate you being here on the show, taking some time. Uh, as I understand it, we've got a little bit of a video to show. Uh, so why don't we cue that up? We didn't set out to start a nonprofit. 
We're here because we had to raise money for a family member and a coworker that were fighting breast cancer. A number of years later, here we are. Hello, help the fight. Almost entirely volunteer run and more focused than ever on directing the funds that we raise directly back to the folks that are in the fight. My name's Amy and I'm a breast cancer survivor. I feel so blessed to have helped the fight in my life. They helped me and my family get through some really tough days during my treatment. Help the fight, people helping people. That was a great overview to um, what Help the Fight does. Um, you, you started the organization with a similar idea to uh, how we started Lancaster Connects, you know, encouraging uh, our, our local community to, to play a small part in supporting the community. Um, tell us about how you got Help the Fight started. Well, first of all, thanks again for having us. It's, it's so exciting to, uh, for you to give us this exposure. But um, I lost my mom to help the, or to breast cancer years ago. And my grandmother had it and my sister had it. And I think we all know someone or, or someone either within your own family or friends that, that has battled breast cancer at some point or another. Um, being a volunteer for many other organizations, my husband and I said, how can we bring this to Lancaster? How can we bring this to Lancaster where we have a nonprofit and the money actually goes to that patient? We would not the patient direct, but we actually help pay the bills or whatever bill that that patient needs help with, whether it's medical bill, daycare, whatever it is. And um, we weren't sure we evolved over the years, but um, what we did do is we came together in a few weeks, had a large bake sale, raised over $9,000, helped out the individuals that we intended to, and then also helped our local community. And the interest in need was so great that we said, okay, we have to knuckle down and take this further. And that's what we did. That's right. I mean, $9,000 on an initial bakery fundraiser is pretty astounding. Uh, I've done enough volunteer work in years gone by. That's a lot of money. So that's a testament to your commitment, which is great. Um, so how do you, like, what's the work that Help the Fight does? What are you doing there? Share with our listeners how many people you help and and what's the cost of all this? I mean, to, to run Help the Fight. Well, we keep our costs as low as possible because basically we're volunteer run. We have two very part-time paid employees. Outside of that, everything that we've done over the past 11 years has been volunteer. We hold as many fundraisers as we can. COVID really squashed a lot of that as it did for all nonprofits. But the local community has rallied behind us and we've done as many things online as possible. Um, last year alone, you know, COVID may stop social events and may stop uh, people from, um, you know, getting together in large groups, but it didn't stop the cancer diagnosis. So last year alone, we helped over 200 patients um, that needed us. We provide wow. gap funding for people that are battling breast cancer, but we also, let's say you're a brother or a sister of, of someone who was diagnosed and you want to get the genetic testing or you want to have a mammogram or you, you need an ultrasound. Insurance companies don't always cover these things. We help with those as well. Um, wow. We really will do, we're open to many options when it comes to fundraisers. Uh, we've got a couple going right now and we have our main event coming this October, which the board just voted to hold. And that would be a spooky knock. And we can get into that then in a few moments. Yeah, yeah that's great. I mean, 200 people is pretty incredible, incredible. To, uh, to have been able to help. And it's an interesting void that you fill. That, that gap funding, I believe, is, is what you referred it to, at, like referred to it as. It is. Those are the right words. It I'm, is. Untwist my tongue there. Mm -hmm. um, <laughs> yeah, it's not just the medical bills. It's everything else that no, they it's, might need help with. It could that. be groceries. Right. It, it could be groceries. It, it could be medicines. It could be anything. Um, I recently had a, a patient call me and, you know, she was receiving treatment at a facility and she needed financial assistance. And, you know, the, the larger hospitals, they've got protocol and guidelines. Um, and she was in tears on the phone. And she said, Linda, she said, 
my husband makes this much money, but that doesn't mean that our debt load isn't this. And, and we don't have money to pay all these bills. I said, look, we're not going to discriminate. Submit the forms. And we were very quick to help. And in emergency situations, we can help in a matter of hours financially. Wow. We, we've needed to do that. Incredible. We've actually, um, yeah, I actually had a um, physician call and say, I have a gal that's about to start chemo and her insurance doesn't cover the, the chemo drugs, the prior to, you know, the anti-nausea and so on and so forth. Um, we really rallied quickly and um, got a hold of the pharmacy and we got her those drugs and she started her chemo on time. Well, that's great. I, so we're committed. I know we've got viewers. Huh? Yeah, I know, I know we've got viewers and listeners who would like to support Help the Fight. Um, you've got a number of ways that people can support you. What What are some of those ways? We do have a number of ways. Um, you know, we have a Facebook page and a web a web uh, page, and we're on Instagram, and we try to promote all of our fundraisers on those. So to be aware of those first and foremost is is very helpful. Um, we oftentimes need volunteers, whether it's volunteers to help us go into the public to get donations. For example, our main event is October 2nd this year at Spooky Nook. Now, in 2019, we had over 600 attendees. With COVID, we don't know where we're going to be in October. We don't know what the attendees are. But being a volunteer-run organization, we get as many donations as possible. So for volunteers to be out there and help us get donations is an amazing help. Also, for the business owners out there that are looking for exposure, um, we offer a, a real land of uh, sponsorships, whether it be a smaller sponsorship, whether it be a very large sponsorship, we have many opportunities to do that. Right now, we are selling tickets for our summer cash giveaway. Uh, we do it every June. We give away cash every day for the entire month of June. A ticket is $10. That's for 30 chances to win. You could win $50, $100, or $250. Um, so, you know, reach out to us. Get tickets. Help us sell tickets. It's that easy. Yeah, that's great. And, I mean, that's one of the things we, we remind our listeners of every episode is if you're not able to financially help, again, you've got the time that you could offer. You could help to sell tickets. You could help with the fundraising events. Folks like yes. yourself, I mean, yes, the, the funds are so important, but you also have to execute. You have to put the boots on the ground and kind of get the work done. So that's what Lancaster Connects Community is about. We'll talk about that a little later. But you've got, you mentioned some fundraisers for April right here mm -hmm. this month yet. Um, you're doing a designer purse giveaway. What's that all about? Well, we sold tickets and the tickets were $20 a piece and we give away a designer handbag for each day for the entire month of April. It was a real success. Um, yeah, in 2019, we actually had a designer handbag bingo at the Lancaster Farm Center. Well, we couldn't do that this year. So we thought, how can we raise money? We have to be as creative as anyone else does these days. And um, we sold a lot of tickets. It was a very beneficial fundraiser for us. And I can tell you that the winners of these handbags are super delighted. It's Tori Birch, it's Michael Kors, it's Coach, it's Kate Spade, it's Dooney and Burke, it's the good stuff. That's so awesome. those tickets are no, yeah, those tickets are no longer available. Gotcha, gotcha. And you, you mentioned the uh, summer cash giveaway. You, um, We understand mm -hmm. you had to apply for special paperwork for that? What's that about? <laughs> Well, what we do throughout the year, we do. We we have a game of chance license. We have a gaming license. And um, some people really give us a hard time. They're like, Linda, you really have a gaming license? Yeah, we need to. And the, the criminal background check yeah. has been, been done and I cleared. But um, in order to do that, we want to do everything legal. Being a 501c3, we um, which is very costly to become a 501c3. And again, we're volunteer run. So we highly rely on the public to support us. And we're looking for exposure. Again, so grateful to you gentlemen today to have us on. Um, so yes, we do have our, our gaming license. <laughs> <Do that. laughs> yep. 
I remember that from uh, youth football. We, you know, we had fundraisers and oh, yeah. making sure we always had the updated gaming license every year was very important. Mm. Uh, it is. One of those it's, things, it's, it's really huge. Kind of neat. Yeah, it needs to happen, but it's also, you kind of think, really? I need to do this as a nonprofit, but such as it is. Uh, but yeah, good for you. Uh, so you've got the big fundraiser coming up in October. That was uh, October 2nd, I believe. Is that correct? It is October 2nd. Um, this is our main main event of the year. Yeah, it's October 2nd. Um, I actually have, we just mailed out our Save the Date cards. Um, it's our 12th year of doing this. Um, can everybody see that? There you go. Yeah. There you yep. go. Yep. And we've got um, some, doors we'll open at 4 30. On the show notes. Yeah. Yeah, we'll have the details we, up we on the sell screen tickets. On the show notes, but yeah. Okay. We sell tickets for $55, but it's a great night. It's a fun, fun night. Uh, not a super dress-up night. We want everyone to be comfortable. But we have a live auction. We have silent auction. We have games of chance. Again, hence the license. Uh, we have many, many raffles. Hopefully, the majority of these items have been graciously donated to us by businesses and, and individuals. Um we promote it. It's it's fifty five dollars for an all you can eat buffet. There's there's that includes desserts, which is my favorite part. Uh, it's fun night. Melanie Garner from War One Hundred Three is our MC every year. She has become part of our family. She's been so generous with her time, and um, we'd love to have have you there. Yeah, very nice. So if people want to get tickets, um, looks like we have to call. Uh, call to get tickets. What number is that? Let's for the, those that listen, not um, necessarily watch the show. Right. So Our number seven one seven. Yeah, they would call the Help the Fight office at seven one seven four five five seven zero nine five. We also will be promoting on Facebook and Instagram how to reach us. Uh, everyone on our mailing list currently will receive everything through the mail if they wish to get tickets or tables of eight. Um, we typically have done tables of eight, tables of 10. We're not sure with COVID if we're going to do tables of 10. That's still to be decided. Um, but you can also go to our web, which is helpthefight.org. We have everything on our website. Okay, wonderful. So if somebody wanted to donate an auction item, um, what, what kind of auction items are good? Uh, and, and how would they do that? Mm. Well, they can certainly call us. Um, auction items... It, it could be anything from artwork. It could be, we're looking for all new items, whether it's jewelry, um, gift certificates are, are amazing. Food trucks are so popular right now. So maybe, you know, we could get a gift certificate for uh, four people for a food truck, something like that, or dinner for two somewhere, dinner for four, dinner for a family. Um, we also do everything from, um, there's a lot of crafty people in the Lancaster County area. So we've received gorgeous pottery, uh, good, gorgeous woodworking items and things like that. Um, one year, uh, a gentleman came in. He didn't want to be recognized. He brought us the most gorgeous birdhouse. Um, he makes birdhouses, things like that. So we, we really are looking for anything. Uh, gift baskets are very, very popular. Children's toys, wagons, larger items. Um our live auction items could matters. be anything from a, a smoker or, yeah, that would be fabulous. <laughs> a mattress. <laughs> yeah, maybe we can uh, wrangle up one, a couple of our vendors. I'm sure we'll, we can. We'll get you something, something great. Put it that way. Oh, we'll we, we'd really appreciate show. it, guys. Well, yeah, we know you're yeah. great, so, uh, so so we'll hold you to it. Yeah, yeah. I'm sure you will. <laughs> something tells me about you, Linda, that that... That's not a problem. So, um, so we talked about volunteers. We talked about, uh, obviously, if people mm -hmm. can donate money, you know, they can reach out to you, help the fight now at gmail.com, give you a call, 717-455-7095. But if that's not, if you're just not able to do that, uh, time-wise, again, um, how can people help you with their time? What, where, where's the need in prep for this big fundraiser? Where's the need over the summer for the cash giveaway? How can people help you there? Um, well, the gift of time is immeasurable. And we're so grateful to those that have been um, committed to us over the years. 
but they can help us by selling tickets. Selling these cash summer um, or the summer cash giveaway tickets is so easy because who most people would spend ten dollars for a chance to win cash thirty times. Uh, but for the main event, um, to help us procure donations, to help, yeah, you want how? Don't worry. Uh, I'm raising my hand because I, I buy tickets like that all the time. Yeah. <laughs> I do as well. I do as well. Um, but, you know, to, to help us, you know, procure donations um, closer to the event, we need help with merchandising items and, and putting things in the gift baskets. We have a merchandise. We, we, it's fun. We might order 10 pizzas, you know, but but it's fun. Everybody gets together and we, we you know, we get everything together looking gorgeous. and We load it into a trailer until the night prior to where we set up. Uh, we do. We need time helping to set up. And we've had that. We've had people that just say, Linda, look, I can't help prior to. I can't come to meetings. That's fine. Um, show up the night before and help us set up. Even give us two hours. That would be a huge benefit to us. Yeah, I can I can I can second and third and fourth infinity that uh, I know from my volunteer days, you know, you're in this every day. You're running help we fight are. every day, you and your team. Mm -hmm. And, you know, the culmination of an annual event uh, is always great. Uh, the payoff is great, but boy, is it physically, mentally, emotionally exhausting. So if you're listening to this and you've got that time, look, October 2nd is uh, four months away or so, five months away, um, five months away almost. Uh, put it in your calendar mm -hmm. and reach out to this organization and, you know, put, pick things up and put things down for a couple hours. You'll help your community. You'll help those in need, you know. Um, I've got, uh, a retailer friend of mine as a peer, uh, Ben, I think you've met him, Nick Urban, Delaware. Oh yeah. Uh, his wife, Taylor, uh, has, was recently diagnosed with breast cancer. Mm. Uh, as I understand, uh, seems to be fairly advanced. Uh, they're in Delaware. So Taylor, Nick, we're thinking of you. Uh, I figured I'd mention here on this episode when I knew we'd have Linda on, um, um, she's got a great network. Uh, her friend, her friend network on Facebook looks amazing. So we're thinking of her and we're thinking of everybody uh, with, uh, with breast cancer. But um, as we wrap up here, uh, so we get a hold of you, helpthefight.org. Um, what, what other social media channels are you on? Where can people connect with you there? Uh, many people connect with us through Facebook. Okay, so we're just help the fight on Facebook, and then at Instagram, we we have a help at help the fight for our Instagram page. Many people, um, Facebook just seems to be the largest social media avenue for us currently. We're also on LinkedIn. Um, you can reach out to us on LinkedIn. We've had people do that in the past. Um, we've had people just show up at our physical location here in Melville, um, but to call us, and we're we're not always here. You know, I, I do have a full-time career in addition to helping run the nonprofit. But um, if we're not, you can always leave us a message. We will get back to you quickly. And if you want to call and Help the Fight, that's 717-455-7095. Yes, yes. And we will keep your friend in our prayers. And if we can assist, please let us know. Thank you. Yeah, we'll do that for Taylor. Very much appreciated. Well, We've got a little something for you. Uh, we'll certainly commit to some raffle prizes uh, for the big event. Um, yeah. You know, we're, we're grateful in that our vendors typically, when we ask for things like that, they'll they'll help us out. Uh, if if we can't get that help, we'll certainly fill the void with our own generosity there and do it. Uh, but right now, we've got a little donation for you. Uh, so we've got hundred and twenty five dollars for help the fight. Uh, oh we'll wow! Get check out in the mail to you today. Uh, get that out in the mail. Uh, just a little small token for you being here, you taking the time, and hopefully that can help uh, help those in need that uh, you know need to fill that little void there. So, Linda, thank you for all we you do very, for our community. We really, really appreciate it. Thank you. We are so humbled by your support and your generosity. Thank you so much. No, Look forward welcome. to talking to you. You're welcome. Yeah, yeah. Thanks for hang on. Uh, we'll. We'll have you back. We'll talk about some other fun stuff here uh, a little later okay. on the show. All right. Okay. So we've got a uh, photo contest update. All right. Uh, that's a photo contest time. And we need you in the audience to decide who the winner uh, will be. 
All right, the winner gets a custom made pillow made right here in our store and to their exact requirements. We basically have a pillow making machine, we'll build it for you. Uh, we're starting a new round of our photo contest and we want as many submissions as possible. Uh, this time we're gonna limit to one entry per person. I think that's fair. Uh, to enter, all you need to do is post your picture as a comment on our photo contest round number two post on our Facebook page. And that's of course, facebook.com forward slash Lancaster Connects. And we'll show our short list of the best pictures on next week's show and ask you, the viewer, to vote for the winner. That's awesome. Can I, can I enter? No, you can't enter. Okay. So what we need you to do now, uh, the audience, is help us pick a winner for the first round. Uh, we have three entries to vote for your favorite. Uh, just leave the comment on this clip with number one, two, or three. All right. Uh, so photo number one is from Mike Ocanero. We're going to go with that. Mike O. Thankfully, we don't have another Mike O. Photo number one is from Mike Ocanero. This is springtime in Strasburg. Photo number two is also from Mike Ocanero. This is Hans Hurst. Hans Her House in Lancaster County. All right. I like his first one best. Well, you're not, see, you're not supposed to weigh it. Well, I, you're not supposed to throw not, bias. I'm not allowed it. to give my opinion. Not right now. It's a oh. fair contest. Photo number three. <laughs> well, they're from, both his picture. Is from Sarah Reynolds. <laughs> and this is Rock Hill Access in Conestoga. That's nice too. All right. So we've got three options um, that you can choose from. Mm -hmm. Just post one, two, or three in the comment there. And we'll announce the winner on the next show. Just for fun, though, uh, this is my Amish photo. I'm, I'm disqualifying myself, <laughs> of course. But uh, if you recall from past episode, this was my trip to Amish country. Uh, I always like going out there. I kind of like windshield time. I like driving. Um, there's, there's a couple little smart Alex out there. Uh, it's always fun to kind of interact with them. It's almost like meeting a different culture. No question. But, yeah, but yeah, Ben's done the trip, you know. But, you know, we connect with this factory. They're family owned, uh, a righteous company, full of integrity, and they make a great product for our customer <clears throat> that we believe in. Uh, you know, while seemingly not all that important, a foundation box spring, it really is. It's all the support your mattress needs. It's what's going to keep you comfortable and stable uh, in the bed all night long. So it's part of the system. It's important. One of those unsung heroes. That's true. That's yeah. true. So, yeah, we, we need your help. Um, the audience help uh, to pick a winner for the photo contest. Um, to vote for your favorite, just leave a comment um, on this clip uh, with one, two, or three, and the winner uh, will get that $60 custom made pillow. Um, do that on our Facebook page, Lancaster, or facebook.com slash Lancaster Connects. Yep. Yep. Look for photo contest number one. Post your favorite one, two, or three. So I've got Sleep Better Tip, or do you want to read the Sleep Better Tip? Go ahead. Go ahead. You want me to read maybe, it? Maybe, maybe one day I'll feel, I'll get up the nerve to read a sleep better tip. But, you know, <laughs> this, this is your segment. I'll just. You're going to relax. Read. All right. So sleep can help with uh, weight control. Uh, much promising research has revealed that sleep can play a key part in helping those who struggle with weight control. Getting the necessary amount of good quality sleep consistently will help to make you less prone to gain excess weight over time. Sleep helps keep your body's hunger, controlling hormones and metabolism more balanced and regulated. And when you're well rested, you're more apt to choose healthy foods, have more resistance to unhealthy food choices, which is very important nowadays because it's like everywhere. Uh, and those choices will most definitely have a positive impact on your health. All right. Little known fact to go along with that. Try not to eat after seven o'clock. You can actually on an empty stomach burn about 400 calories overnight just by sleeping 400 calories on an empty stomach don't eat after seven i like, can't say that i follow that advice yeah, <laughs> maybe yeah. i should <laughs> i mean like i know like you know for me to burn 400 calories in jujitsu getting back on the mat mm -hmm. is like getting myself just like basically beat up for about 45 minutes yep so yep. empty stomach get beat up your choice right <laughs> um <laughs> So anyway, you can get your free copy of Sleep Better. We'll mail you a free copy like this. Just go to gardenersmattressandmore.com. And we'll even include a little post-it note bookmark if you want. All right. <coughs> that was pretty funny. Yeah, it was pretty fun. <laughs> so we got some more events to talk about. Why don't you kick those off? Yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah. So uh, Nisley Vineyards and Winery Estate 
Uh, they've got a wine tasting and charcuterie. So did I say that right? Charcuterie. Charcuterie. Board. See, that's 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 above my 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 level of fanciness. Um, <laughs> so the, on the patio <laughs> of uh, your own a picnic. <laughs> On the lush lawns of the Nisley Vineyards and Winery Estate, uh, Monday through th- sat- Saturday, goodness, 10 through 5, and Sunday, 12 through 5, and they are located at 140 Vintage Drive in Bainbridge, uh, Lancaster County, and you can visit their website for m- more information, nisleywine.com. Damn good thing we didn't have you read the book. <laughs> Words are hard today. <laughs> Words are hard. <laughs> Saturday Maybe. almost was above your pay grade. Yes, yes. It's uh, char- charcuterie or charcuterie board. And Saturday. It, it's so funny because I have this joke with my sister about it's just cheese and crackers and meat on a board. Like everybody goes crazy for <laughs> right, this stuff. Right, right. And I guess the art is in the art of the display, right? Sounds right. I get that. Yeah. You, know? you like it for what it is. Back in the. <laughs> That's an That's inside a, joke. We'll reveal that one day. on another show. Um, Let's move on. Yeah, we'll move on. But I, I get why the, the meat and cheese boards or charcuterie boards are, are something. I get it. As a chef, I worked at Zinn's Diner as a chef as a young teenager or a teenager uh, years ago. So I get presentation. But it, it to me, it's just cheese and crackers. <laughs> and um, meat, apparently. And meat. Yeah, we're, our producer's telling us it's meat as well. But I see an awful lot of cheese and crackers with it, too. So I stick with my assertion. Anyway, uh, on to more meat. Always more meat to be found here. Shady Maple Smorgasbord celebrating its 36th anniversary now through May 1st with meal specials and door prizes awarded hourly. Uh, Shady Maple is located uh, at 129 Toddy Drive, East Earl. Uh, That's right off of Route 23. Uh, Visit the website for more info on the Smorgasbord at shadymaple.com forward slash smorgasbord. Love me some Shady Maple. Oh, yeah. (laughs) As if you can't tell. It's been a while since I've been there, but I remember it's, it's an experience. It's definitely experience. Yeah. Uh, the Effort of Public Library. My good friend Penny Talbert runs the Effort of Public Library. Um, yeah. Yeah. She does a fantastic job there. I know all public libraries have, or well, probably all libraries in general, have struggled this last year. Uh, but they've got one for the kids uh, coming up. Um, in-person outdoor story time at the Effort of Public Library is actually Wednesdays, every Wednesday uh, at 10 a.m. outside the library building. Uh, registration is required. Uh you can sign up for future story times on the like on the library's event calendar. The Effort of Public Library is located at 550 South Reading Road in Effort. And you can get more info on their site, effortofpubliclibrary.org. I was a, uh, in my younger days when the Effort of Public Library building was built, that was like advanced, uh, high architecture. I, I, it is a very an cool building. building. Yeah, yep. yeah. Uh, you got time for this one yet? Wraps up May 1st. Milk a cow. That's fun. I did that. I grew up on a farm as a kid, so I know all about that. Still time to milk a cow on the farm tour at Old Windmill Farm. Uh, Windmill Farm is found at oldwindmillfarm.com. And the address is 262 Paradise Lane, Ronk. 16 bucks a person, $5 and under are free. Really uh, interesting uh, thing to do with your family there, for sure. You'll have a great time. I'm positive of it. So this is a neat thing. It's uh, an event called Say It With Paper. Uh, it's at Horst Arts on April 30th, uh, Friday, April 30th, 30th. You can express your creative side and create a fun sign at the art studio. Uh, with some instruction, you'll experiment with paper arts and glue scraps of paper, uh, and you'll uh, put that onto a wooden canvas and create a colorful ready-to-hang sign. Uh, it's great for large or small groups, um, businesses, that sort of thing. Uh, looking for a girls' night, guys' night, maybe not a guys' night, probably more of a girls' night thing. I don't know. It might be. It could be a guys' night. Uh, they're located at 17 North Main Street in Mannheim. Tickets are $25. You can visit horstarts.com for more information. Speaking of wood canvases, 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 canvases. We've reached little, that part of the show. Yeah, it is. Just a little aside. Hey, if you're into any of that, like uh, repurposing of wood pallets, <clears throat> all right, I think Ben knows where I'm going with this. Mm. We have an abundance of wood pallets here. So if you would like to build one of those really cool pallet uh, deck furniture projects, we've got pallets for that. Uh, I actually made a wine rack out of a pallet. Did you really? Yeah, yeah, yeah. It's pretty neat. Uh, found that on Pinterest. Uh, speaking of 
uh, Pinterest, although the words are there, not the same thing. Two Pints Shy, live at Weathered Vineyards in Ephrata. Two Pints Shy Live is Friday, April 30th, 5 to 8. So we're giving you a lot of things. You listen to the show, you don't have your weekend plans, here you go. Friday the 30th, 5 to 8, come out and come out for a great night of food, drink, and live music in the tented courtyard. Reservations are not required, nor are they taken. It's $5 a person. 100% of it goes to the musicians, so that's great. They've been affected as of late. Uh, if the parking lot is full, there's overflow parking lot at the Effort Rec Center. Please don't park in the bed and breakfast uh, across the street. Uh, there's a Mediterranean bistro being ser- menu uh, being served, bistro menu being served from five to eight. And they, of course, are complying with all the current mandates. Uh, since they have a tent, their live music is happening, rain or shine. This is at Weathered Vineyards in Ephrata, 900A West Main Street, Ephrata, five to eight, five dollar cover charge. More information at weatheredvineyardsefrata.com. So the next is uh, Country Barbecue at Country Barn uh, on Weaver Road in Lancaster. We, uh, my family, we used to live uh, in Millersville and down the road from Country Barn. It was always a fun place. They had, um, you know, petting zoos. Um, actually, my wife's uh, company that she works for uh, does their company picnics at Country Barn. A lot of really, really cool, fun, summery farm things. But uh, they've got delicious barbecue uh, right there at the farm. Uh, Saturday, May 2nd. Um, that's Farmer Jim's almost famous chicken barbecue. Um, they take walk-ins, but, uh, they can't guarantee a meal. Um, you should pre-order, uh, your meal. Uh, the chicken barbecue meal if includes, you walk out with one. if you want to walk out with one. Yep. Yep. Uh, leg and thigh, uh, chicken, uh, leg and thigh, uh, baked potato, uh, roast or roasted corn, uh, in season, coleslaw, macaroni, salad, roll, and butter, pretty much everything you get with a normal chicken barbecue, uh, only $10 a meal. Uh, you can uh, check our show notes on LancasterConnects.com for a uh, link for more information. And again, they're located at 360 Weaver Road in Lancaster. And then our last event, local makers market at the shops at Rockvale. That property is re, uh, reimagining itself. The makers market we know was always well attended from when we had our outlet store there. Saturday, May 1st, 10 to 3. So listen, you could uh, reserve your meal at the Country Barbecue, at Country Barn, and then hit the maker's market, and then go pick your meal up. Uh, Saturday, May 1st, 10 to 3, come shop your favorite local makers all in one spot. This is local artisan's opportunity to sell their wares, meet the public. Uh, Wide variety of goods, candles, soap, skincare, woodworking, oils, jewelry, sweets, and goodies. They also have live music from Ben Pearson. Enjoy food and drinks from Annie Ann, Sarah's Creamery, uh, Fetish Brewing Company, and many more. That's at the Shops of Rockvale. If you're local to Lancaster, you know where Rockvale is. But if you're not, it's 35 South Willowdale Drive, right at the corner of Lincoln Highway and Route 896. They will get you there. All right. That event segment was well done, Jeff. I think so. Yeah. And we, we, we did promise we'd talk about food trucks. Food truck alert. We, we should have something that flashes on the screen. Yeah. yeah. Woo, 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 woo. Food truck get alert. Get on that. Get on that, Simon and Billy. Uh, Ula Bowls. There you go. Yeah. Ula Bowls food truck will be located at the following locations over the next week. Oh man, that looks good on the screen, wow. Um, They are at the market at uh, Wilbur uh, Chocolate in Lancaster, Wilbur Building. Um, That's uh, off of 501 in Lidditz, uh, Thursday through uh, Sunday, 8 a.m. to 3 p.m. at the Lancaster Marketplace uh, on Fruitville Pike. Um, Also uh, Monday through Saturday, nine to six, and Sundays nine to three at Central Market in Lancaster. Um, you can get more information, uh, you, uh, follow them on Facebook uh, at Ula Bowls or visit their website, ulabowls.com. That's O-O-L-A bowls.com. Beansy, Beansy's Cafe Espresso and Smoothie Truck will be at Bloomin' Market in Reinholds. I didn't even know there was a Bloomin' Market in Reinholds. Uh, that's cool. Isn't there like a German village up there? Is that it? I guess it's okay. Yeah, that's probably it. It's, don't take our word for it. Go to beansyscafe.com. But they've got uh, their espresso and smoothie food truck. We'll be at the Bloomin' Market in Reynolds, April 30th to May 1st from 9 to 11. All right. So check them out, beansyscafe.com. Or give them a call, 484-577-3782. Holy smokes. Meats. This is up my alley. Holy smokes, meats. They will be at Bloomin' Market as well. There's a, there's a picture of Bloomin' Market 
Right. No, maybe that's not Bloomin' Market. Anyway, that's a picture of their, their, their truck. truck. Yeah. yeah. Mm-hmm. Um, they will be at Bloomin' Market in Reinhold's April 30th from 5 to 8 o'clock. Uh, Bloomin' Market is located at 611 Orchard Road in Reinhold's. There's the answer. 611 Orchard Road, Bloomin' Market, Reinhold's. That's why Bull's Head. Bull's Head Public House at Kissel Valley Farm, Saturday and Sunday, May 1st and 2nd. Admission is $5. Uh, Sunday, May 1st from 3 to 8, they'll have live music from Mike Manigal, McManigal and Colebrook Road. On Sunday from noon to 5, live music from Andy Mowat in Nearly York. The food trucks are there both days. We've got Crave Catering, Blazing Swine Barbecue, HodgePodge Catering, and the Bull's Head Public House is located at 14 East Main Street in Lidditz. And you can follow them on Facebook at Bull's Head Public House. I'm really excited about that event that's right around the corner from my house and mm-hmm. the last two years the kissel hole farm has done a great job putting together some weekend uh family friendly entertainment uh this year they're changing it up a little bit by having bull's head pu- uh, pub- public house there um and i, I was kind of teased by it because they had the bulls bulls had put a trailer on the property uh, about a month ago and i've been I'm driving past it and curious as to what was going on so so know. that's it now now we know they're they're going to be there um and it, it's a really really fun time uh, especially when the weather is nice so very good well listen it's uh it's proving more difficult than we think it should be to tell viewers where to find the great food trucks in our area so food trucks if you're going to be somewhere let us know hit us up at lancasterconnects.com uh, we'll tell our viewers where you'll be so they can find out uh, and support you fill out the form at lancasterconnects.com and tell us where you'll be at And don't forget to, of course, like and share this video. Help us help you. Uh, Leave a comment and tell a friend about this show. Guests, Linda, John, food trucks. Any food trucks uh, that you typically support or any of those that we talked about look good to you? Well, I don't know about you, John, but if there's a food truck, I'm there. It just means I don't have to go go home and cook. (laughs) Um, food trucks are great. Aren't they? Uh, I think the Lafayette Fire Company's got a big food truck event this evening. They I do. Just, we I talked, think got an email about that. Week, yeah. But... Right. Yep. Right. Yep. So, um, definitely we'll be sure to be there. That's awesome. John? Uh, Sugar Whipped is a, is a good one. If you like, um, you know, your cupcakes and your, your sweet stuff, uh, they're, they're known for their mm-hmm. vegan cupcakes and, and vegan, pretty much everything baked that's goods. Right up my alley right now. Yes. Yeah. Um, so that, that's probably my number one. That's good. Yeah. It's, uh, Steph, who, who runs uh, Sugar Whip Bakery, is, is pretty great. She makes some fantastic treats. For so, sure. Yes. So, John from Weaver Associates, thank you for joining us. You know, we're, we're wearing your fine apparel. I love these shirts. Uh, the former outlet shirts have now become my, you know, when I'm home, office day shirts or uh, going out shirts and I'm not like dressing up per se, uh, even though it's a collar shirt, that my, that my old outlet shirts become my shirt. It's kind of funny. My grandfather was always known for wearing a sport coat. I'd become around the house as, oh, there's dad with his black <laughs> golf shirt. <laughs> so we love them very comfortable so uh weaver associates has a couple of food truck clients uh tell us more about that tell us well first tell us who weaver associates is yeah. we know yeah maybe our listeners don't know and sure. then tell us uh about your food truck clients and what uh, they get from you guys um so Weaver Associates, uh, we, we kind of have our hand in lots of things, but uh, our motto is we help you put ink on paper. So whether that is um, selling you the printer itself, the supplies for the printer, um, or we have a full service print shop that, that can print it for you. So uh, just depends on the, the job, the scope of the job, and, and we can kind of help you out with that. But uh, we do have a couple food trucks. Um, yeah, Vinny and those guys is a uh, pizza shop down uh, on Strasburg Pike. They have a food truck. We print their menus for them. Um, DK Smoke and Barbecue is another uh, barbecue, um, you know, smoked brisket beef stand. Um, we pretty much do everything for them. We do a lot of their all their apparel, 
uh, their business cards, working on menus. Uh, we did the magnets for the side of their truck that they pull their, um, you know, gear behind. So, um, kind of run the gamut with them. Yeah, you're really kind of a one-stop shop for uh, really any any type of business because every business needs business cards and printed materials and signs and posters and you know restaurants with menus i mean you're kind of a one-stop shop for all that stuff john's even right. uh, doing postcards for my kids grass cutting side hustle <laughs> see that's awesome <laughs> <clears throat> yeah there's uh we we pretty much say uh you know if there's anything that gets printed give us a call if, if we can't do it we'll find you the right person to do it but um we do a lot of ad specialty. So even your, your trinkets and your tchotchkes that you, uh, that w- you would give away, uh, we can do those. Yep. That's awesome. Well, we've known John for a long time. Well, Ben longer than I, uh, John, you and I have known each other for about 10 years now, actually. Our yep. 10 year of knowing each other anniversary is coming up. <laughs> Did you know it that? Is. It is. It is. Yes. It is. He's got it marked on the calendar. Yeah. Yeah. Oh, well, yeah. You, yeah, it's my... You and my, me. You and me, man. <laughs> friend anniversary. Uh-huh. So, John, John, yeah, you uh, you started out on the delivery truck at Gardner's way back in 2001, 20, 20 years ago. Um, so, uh, yeah. obviously, uh, you, you know, you've moved on to, to bigger and better things for, for yourself and your career uh, from Gardner's. But, um, you know, just maybe talk a little bit about uh, old Gardner's, um, you know, who we were. Um, and, uh, you know, just share a little bit about that old time. Sure. So, uh, as Jeff said, Ben and I have known each other for, for 20 plus years, uh, going back to Miller. Probably 25 days. years. Yeah. Yeah. Um, the but, gray hair uh, is showing, right? Yes. Yeah. Yeah. My, my hair's a little blonder, so it, it blends in a little bit better. Um, but the the house of pizza in Millersville was uh, Jim Gardner, the former owner's favorite spot to to put job postings, um, and I think that's where where Ben found it because one of my roommates was uh, already on the truck, um, yep. and then when he left, I kind of filled in for him uh, while I was in school. It was a nice part time job, like uh, you know, pick things up, put them down, pretty easy. Um, yep. Like Ben transitioned into a little bit of sales um, after you know working with the truck as well, um, but Jim was gracious enough when I got out of school. Um, I was in IT and did um, you know mostly contract work. And you know when the contract's up, you're out of a job. And Jim was gracious enough, gracious enough to um, always let me come back and fill in, do you know jobs here and there. Um, you know, if it was busy enough, work on the floor, if it wasn't help out on the truck and, um, and then, uh, you know, let's say 10 years ago or so. And Jeff said, uh, you know, I was in that in-between job period again. And that's when you guys offered me the position at the new store. So, yep. Was there for yeah, a couple of years kind before of- I left to go to Weaver. Yeah. Just to kind of clue our listeners in, uh, we, we mentioned, uh, Jim Gardner, uh, obviously the, the, the business that Jeff and I, uh, now own and have owned for the last 10 years is, uh, his namesake Gardner's mattress and more used to be Gardner's bedrooms, mattresses, and water beds with a bunch of Z's at the end. Lots of Z's, yeah. Um, he started Gardner's bedrooms in 1990 in the Regency square shopping center, uh, where we were for our first 21 years, of our history. Uh, great, great dude. Um, you know, he, he's kind of a mentor to, uh, uh, me and, and of course, John and really anybody that ever worked for him, um, kind of took us in. Um, he didn't have any children himself. Uh, so he kind of, uh, kind of took us in as, as his, uh, uh, non-family sons. Right. And, um, you know, a lot of the, the customer service, uh, focus that we have at Gardner's is directly attributed to him. Uh, he retired in 2011, and um, I had worked for him at that point for 11 years and partnered with Jeff, and and uh, here we are as Gardner's Mattress and more. But, uh, John, yeah, you were a big part of that uh, uh, early-day success in, in the early 2000s of, of Gardner's Bedrooms. 
Yeah. And, you know, I think, uh, you know, obviously you're with Weaver Associates now. I consider that as a business owner, one of our proudest moments when we could help a team member, uh, you know, build a skill set, advance their career. And whether it's growing bigger with us or growing bigger elsewhere, that's great. So I'm very happy. I've said that to you numerous times, but I'll say it again yeah, because it's you. one of the proudest moments for me as a business mm-hmm. owner. So with Weaver, um, Weaver Associates, you do a lot of work um, with nonprofits, uh, help the fights one of your clients. You actually nominated them to be on the show. So thank you again for that. Yep. Uh, how many nonprofits yes, does Weaver them. Associates work with? Yeah, of course. You, you work with them. How many do you work with? How, what do you do for them? Uh, and why did you start working? I guess really the more important question is, uh, Ron Weaver is the owner of, of the company. Um, I believe I have that correct. Yeah, what's his belief yep. there to help the nonprofits in the area? Uh, as far as a sheer number, I was trying to come up with that number the other day, and I would say we're probably close to 200 nonprofits that we work with in the in the area. Oh. Um, and and some of that has come from, uh, you know, Ron and I come from a small private school background. Um, and as anyone knows, small private schools are, are nonprofits themselves and don't have a ton of money. Um, so we started out by, you know, helping some of the, the local schools um, with their print needs, getting them some supplies cheaper. Uh, we always offer nonprofit rates. Uh, so uh, if whether that's a print job or supplies, you know, we offer lower rates to, to nonprofits. Um, at the end of the year, uh, then when we're, you know, kind of in December time, um, Ron will then, you know, make donations back to all of those nonprofits that we work with. So uh, he takes a, you know, portion of the proceeds that we make from them and, and gives back. Um, so nonprofits are, are very near and dear to our heart. Um, doesn't really matter what, what it is. Um, you know, we, we kind of cover the base with, uh, with all different kinds of nonprofits. That's Great. fantastic. Um, so you, you help uh, businesses, obviously, with their, their uh, tech needs. And one of those tech needs is often a printer. Um, we actually uh, invested in a Mambo printer with, uh, from, Mambo. Weaver, <laughs> from Weaver Associates. And it's guaranteed to save us toner and ink cost. I, I know this. Um, but you offer a free uh, printer edit, uh, edit audit. <laughs> I know what I'm talking yes, about. Yes, we tell do. Us about, and, tell and us about that. Tell us about printer audits, John. So basically what we would do, uh, now I was very familiar, of course, with with the gardener situation. So I knew, you know, based on my own experience here or there, um, what what their needs were. But let's say if you called me out of the blue, uh, you know, whether you're a, uh, a small five-man shop or you're a big, huge warehouse that has a hundred printers or even an office that has multiple printers. Uh, we have a software that we can put on the network. It will basically scan all the printers. We'll let it run for a couple weeks and see what print jobs you're printing to what printers. Uh, we know enough about pretty much most of the printers to know, uh, where if you're sending volume to a smaller machine, it's going to be a higher cost per page we can kind of shift that to another machine or, uh, you know, maybe the machines are so old, the cost of supplies is so high. We can make recommendations for new machines that are, you know, like Ben said, the the costs of the supplies for the machine that he, they just bought is going to save them. uh, I mean, I I'm thousands over the next five years in, in supply costs. That's, that's how much they're going to save. Um, so it's things like that, that we come in um, and kind of educate the customer on different printers. Uh, you know, we'll explain that the bigger the printer, the bigger the supplies, the lower the cost per page. So while you might shell out a little bit more, you know, at the time of sale, over the five-year period, which is what we kind of base everything on, you're going to save some money. Yeah. How does a business uh, request that audit? 
easiest way is to to reach out to us by phone. Uh, I mean, the 717-394-5009, you know, we're always, always in the office. Um, sales guys aren't always in the office, but, you know, there's always multiple people there. Uh, our, our website is kind of under construction at this point. So, I mean, you're more than welcome to go to it, weaverassociatesinc.com. But um, once the website is up, we'll probably have a link to uh, to reach out about the audit because it's something that we talk about a lot. And you've got some tips for uh, nonprofits. And I mean, just the fact that you work with 200 nonprofits locally is you hear that number. For me, it's a big number, uh, yeah. which I guess speaks to the need to help our neighbors out. And so thank you for Weaver for doing that. But uh, the tips that nonprofits can, can use uh, to save money on their printing, what do you have there to share? Uh, I mean, it's usually reaching out to us uh, with, you know, kind of the scope of the job uh, and, you know, letting us, you know, let's say if it was a nonprofit, they did a lot of printing in-house. We can look at that job and, you know, there's the time of somebody to stand there and watch the machine print. Uh, There's, you know, you're buying the supplies and like anything else, you got to buy a ton of it to, to get the cost down. So we can look at taking that print, bringing it into our print shop and delivering it back to them desktop cheaper than they can print it themselves. I mean, that's that's pretty much the biggest tip that we can give to, to any company, but especially nonprofits that are trying to save as much as they can. Yeah. And we, we actually just did that. Uh, one of our most recent projects... Uh, when we um, when we deliver uh, our mattresses to our customers, we have a thank you letter, uh, a little coupon uh, as a new customer welcoming you to the family, uh, a testimonial review form and a referral form. And that takes a lot of work uh, for our staff to organize that. So now twice a week, uh, Weaver will drop those off for us. So whether it's a big job, a small job, uh, look to John, they've got a lot of tips uh, probably, you know, since it's so unique to every business, just give John a call or Weaver Associates. Uh, I believe it's Weaver Associates Inc. dot com. Uh, you can go there. Mm-hmm. And was that three nine three five zero zero nine, John, to get a hold of you? Three nine four five zero zero nine. Three nine four. Yeah, don't call three nine three. Three nine four five zero zero nine to call John, and he'll he'll work you through uh, the best format to uh, to maximize your savings on printing. Uh, so, John, thanks for being with us. Uh, I've got a local history nugget, so stay tuned. This one's interesting. Okay. All right. So, yeah, I was like, all right, I'm, I'm just waiting. Hit me with Give the, it to me. Hit me with the history nugget. So, the history nugget this time is the Lancaster Rifle. Uh, several, tr- several treaties between Native Americans and the government in the 1860s involved uh, the presence of muzzle-loading weapons for Native Americans. Uh, the Lancaster rifle was a special yet inexpensive model, became extremely popular with the government and other companies who were trading with the Native Americans on the Western Plains. Lancaster rifle was designed by Henry E. Lehman, uh, who was born right here in Lancaster. I, I knew that as soon as I read the name. There he is on your screen. Uh, March 8th, 1812. In 1950, he built a new steam-powered factory at the corner of Walnut Street and Cherry Alley in Lancaster. In 1860, he moved to a larger facility at the southeast corner of James and Christian Street. Uh, In 1887, James Lehman had passed away. During his life, his factory produced more than 100,000 guns. Uh, This information is courtesy of Donald Kautz. Uh, You can learn a lot more about the history of Lancaster County on his website, www.donaldkautz.com. That's pretty right. cool. Yeah, I very like cool. that history nugget. That is a neat one. Um, yeah, so there we go. The Lancaster Rifle. Who knew? Yeah. Brought to you from Lancaster Connects. Yeah, remember, this show is available as a podcast, uh, and you can find the links at LancasterConnects.com. You can watch, you can listen, um, and also don't forget to like and share uh, this video uh, on Facebook and the other social media platforms. Uh, please leave a comment. Tell us what you like about the show. Tell us what you'd like to see. If you have anybody that um, or want to nominate somebody that we can highlight on the show, uh, please do that. And, you know, tell your friends and family about the show. Uh, The more people 
uh, who know about the show and who listen regularly, the more people in the community we can impact uh, over time. So this part, talking about the Lancaster Connects community, will kind of segue into a bigger calling locally. Uh, but something that goes on every May, I've been doing this with my wife now for, let's see, 22 years, because we'll be married 22 years this year. Uh, actually, 23 years, that is. Um, 20, wait. We got married in, uh, no, we've been together that long. So oh, I'm okay. Conflating the dates. Uh, my wife was diagnosed with MS in 2001. So it's 20 years that we've been doing the MS walk together or as a family. There's last year's walk where it was just us because of COVID. Uh, as a family, uh, years prior, it's been a bigger group of the Steph's MS steppers as part of the team. I'm very proud of my wife in the way that she's kind of spearheaded her own team, gathering folks. Um, I know she's raised a lot of money over the years uh, for MS. Typically, we're good as a unit and team for, you know, in the realm of maybe $2,500 to $3,000. And we've been doing that consistently now for 20 years this May. So uh, we are doing the virtual walk event, which means we're going to walk again as a family um, this weekend, the 2nd, May 2nd, uh, coming up here. So we'll be doing that. So shout out to my wife. I've seen what MS has done. Uh, to her from a you know, physical place, mental place. It's not an easy disease because it's one of those that, you know, you look at somebody and you just really never know for the most part, unless they're at the, the end of their journey with the disease where, you know, mobility has been affected, where they might have a cane or a wheelchair, uh, you know, some sort of mobility device uh, or their speech is slurred. It's really a rough disease. There's a million things that can be attributed to it. And for a long time, it wasn't really even a diagnosable disease. If we go back um, when she was first diagnosed, she was in the hospital for a week for a steroid treatment that they didn't really know what it was. And this is in 2001. Uh, now she basically takes a twice a year, uh, six hour long infusion. And it's about the closest thing to a cure that MS has. And for her, it's been really, really uh, amazing. So it's an interesting disease in the fact that it's largely unknown uh, hard to diagnose, hard to deal with. The symptoms come out of nowhere. And my wife, Steph, is just amazing for the way she <laughs> handles it all and runs our family and has just been uh, a champion for helping awareness of the disease. So we're doing that the second. Uh, in Lancaster, May 15th, Lancaster has an MS walk. Uh, May 15th, you can go to the National MS Society's website at nationalmssociety.org for specific links. And of course, you can check the show notes at LancasterConnects.com. Thank you, Jeff. That's yeah. great. Um, we've got a call for volunteers. Uh, of course, the Lancaster Connects community, we're going to talk about this after this um, uh, note about the volunteers that are needed for Memorial Day preparations at Stephen Greenland Cemetery. Uh, in Lancaster. So uh, in advance of Memorial Day, there's uh, really an incredible effort uh, of informal collaboration to honor those uh, who've been forgotten, uh, who've served our country in the ultimate way. Uh, of course, Memorial Day is coming up um, in, in May here. Um, this is at Stevens Greenland Cemetery. If you'd like to help, if you feel led to help, uh, there are several ways to participate. Uh, you can volunteer to help with cleanup, uh, for all the Saturday mornings between now and Memorial Day. Uh, you can donate for repairs and ongoing maintenance uh, at the cemetery. Uh, you can send a check to Sons of American Legion Post 34, uh, care of Gary Wilson. We'll have some of this information uh, on our website, LancasterConnects.com. But uh, Gary Wilson at 1388 Arcadia Road, Lancaster, PA 17601. If you'd like to make a final financial donation, uh, you can also attend uh, the cemetery uh, on Memorial Day to honor those who've served uh, our country. Uh, email drive at co.lancaster.pa.us uh, for anyone interested in volunteering to help them out. Um, their latest email says that they've got 60 headstones left to clean, and uh, that should be done within the next uh, two Saturdays. Uh, if you can volunteer, uh, that would be uh, helpful. Um, they also need uh, help planting uh, shrubs and uh, and other uh, 
uh, items. Um, they need help picking up trash uh, within and around the cemetery property. Um, you know, we, uh, you know, you see cemeteries and you don't realize that actually somebody needs to upkeep those. So uh, these are some of the things that they need help with uh, picking up trash around the cemetery property. Um, and they also need volunteers to help scrape the memorial and repaint it. Uh, one major area they could use uh, help with is fundraising. They are selling coupons for Clyde Weaver's subs, $6 a piece. Uh, they'll have those coupons uh, every Saturday at the cemetery and funds go again towards the maintenance of the cemetery. Just stop by uh, any Saturday morning from now through Memorial Day and buy coupons uh, at their stand. And in addition to the fundraiser uh, coupons, uh, Merrill Schaefer is collecting money towards the restoration of four broken crosses within the cemetery. Uh, they need $400 to fix them. And uh, as of yesterday, they've raised half of that amount. So if you can help financially, that would be helpful. Um, if you And you can do that uh, on their website or just by going to the cemetery on Saturday. Um, and uh, we appreciate uh, Benton Weber. Uh, he provided this information to us. So uh, please, uh, you know, support support them. Um, uh, Memorial Day coming up. It is a time to remember uh, those who, again, gave the ultimate sacrifice for us. And um, any yeah. anything that's donated helps the cemetery out. And that helps needed at Stephen Greenland Cemetery. And that's located at 1000 South Duke Street in Lancaster. So this Saturday, uh, the 1st, if you're looking for something to do, want to give back, you feel called with uh, our Lancaster Connects community, just show up there uh, Saturday mornings there at 1000 South Duke Street in downtown Lancaster. All the information we've just given you and continue to give you through these shows uh, here on Lancaster Connects, all the links, email addresses, all the important things that you need to do to connect to any event, charitable effort we're doing, they're all in the show notes. You can find those show notes by going to LancasterConnects.com and hitting up the page for this episode, in particular, episode number eight. Let's talk about the Lancaster Connects community. Um, the Lancaster Connects community uh, is the volunteer effort. We're, um, we're gathering a list of volunteers that we can produce to nonprofit organizations. If you feel led um, to volunteer for uh, an organization, but don't know who uh, you can volunteer your time to, uh, we can help match you to that nonprofit organization. Uh, go to LancasterConnects.com. Uh, you'll enter our contest entry form for a restaurant gift card. We'll uh, reveal our winners of this week's episode in just a little bit. But there's also a button there on the form. You could uh, select to be part of the Lancaster Connects community, and we can put you in contact uh, with nonprofit organizations who could use your time. So if you've got that worthwhile cause that can make excellent use of our members of the Lancaster Connects volunteering community and their time, that's what the show is all about. Um, whether you have a good cause that needs volunteers or you want to donate time and to help out in the community, we want to hear from you. If you'd like to volunteer your time, enter that giveaway, LancasterConnects.com, and you can check the box if you'd like to volunteer. Um, if you have a good cause that can use some volunteers and that we can promote for you on our show, please get in touch via the contact form at LancasterConnects.com. And of course, please like and share this video, leave a comment, tell a friend all about this show. And all of that wonderful goodness on the show notes, uh, all of the upkeep on Lancaster Connects, uh, reaching out to the great causes that uh, have things going on in our community, the charities that are in need, lining up our guests, making sure the show sounds great, looks great. That's all done by Get Super Serial. They are our production team. Um, they, are, uh, they work tirelessly to help us produce a great show for your enjoyment, for the benefit of our community. So you can go to GetSuperSerial.com if you'd like to produce a show like this for your business, maybe your nonprofit. Uh, if you've got something to say on a regular basis and feel that a show like this would make sense, they'll certainly help you make it a success. We've got a pet of the week. Yeah. We teased Rusty at the uh, open uh, show open. That was your Seinfeld. Reference. Yeah, Rusty. Yeah. yeah, that was a horse. But, you know, Rusty is a dog uh, from Zoe's house. Um, I think we've got, we've got Rusty. Oh, <laughs> Rusty. Meet Rusty. Rusty is a six-year-old boxer mix looking for his fur ever home. Um, he's full of energy and life and looking for a home in which his family will spend time playing with him and give him an opportunity to run. Uh, he needs a home that offers uh, structure, consistency, positive reinforcement, and of course, lots of love. Uh, 
he uh, would like a family who will take the time to continue to work with him and who has experience with his... <laughs> there he is. <laughs> Look at him. He'll even help you shovel some yeah, snow. he's better at that than my kids. Um, no, that's okay. Um, <laughs> so he's Maybe looking for a, a family who <laughs> has experience with his breed and could be beneficial for him. Um, he likes to please you. He loves snuggling. Um, he loves the company of, of people. Um, he would do best as the only animal in the house, um, as he loves to have all of your attention and doesn't always like the company of other uh, doggy friends. Uh, he's not a fan of cats either, uh, so no kitties for this guy. Uh, he and I get along in that respect. Uh, Rusty would also do best with children who are a little older, uh, unless they are uh, used to being around bigger dogs. Um, a home with a fenced-in yard is a must, as Rusty loves to run and play. Uh, he does need time to warm up to new people. Uh, he gets very excited, uh, sometimes forgets to use his manners, and uh, or, or he gets a little nervous uh, when somebody enters his home. Um, he's made great progress, though, since being with Zoe's house and needs a family who understands him and his needs and will continue to put in the time to work with him. Uh, he's truly a sweet guy. I love that video. That's awesome. <laughs> and um, he spends most of his day uh, snuggling and just hanging out. Yeah, I'll say um, let's help find Rusty a forever home. You can go to zoeshouserescue.com, uh, learn how to adopt. Maybe if you want to foster, uh, donate time. They're always in need of people to help transport animals, to spay and neuter appointments, vet appointments. You know, all of their volunteers are... Uh, uh, folks who have jobs, have daily lives, but they see a need to help pets. Uh, I'm directly involved with Zoe's House with my volunteer time. Uh, we fostered a dog and actually an announcement. We formally adopted Dee Dee yesterday. Um, yeah, you know, listen, she's, uh, she's an older pup. Um, and I just didn't have the heart to put her through getting to know another home because as we highlight these pets of the week, you see these failed adoptions, these failed situations, because, um, you know, listen, animals are animals. They, they don't know how to communicate. They're not, uh, like us humans, right? You know, if you, if you think about it, if you've been to like a networking event or a large group party, there's always that guy or gal who kind of acts out of place, who is a close talker, who has a puffy shirt, who, <laughs> low know, talker. Yeah. Yeah. Who just doesn't like kind of fit in. Well, that's, you know, animals, when they got that stress, they're like all those people. And it takes the right person, the right time, the right amount of patience to figure that out. And sometimes it just doesn't work, uh, just doesn't work out. And that's not a fault of the animal uh, as much as it is of the people around them. We need to guide these animals. So it does take time. And in, in at the end of the day, sorry, our producers are in my ear here making me laugh. Um, at the end of the day, we just need to have time and patience for these pets. So if you've got that, um, fostering might be for you, adopting Rusty might be for you, but let's try to help Rusty get a, a really great forever home. He looks like a, a great little pup there. Uh, ben, we've got some gift card winners. We do have some winners. Congratulations to Deborah Dobert from Lidditz and Ed Camacho of Lancaster. They are winners of the Lancaster Connects uh, restaurant gift card giveaway contest. If you'd like to be a winner, uh, all you need to do is go to LancasterConnects.com, enter the contest entry form. There's also the opportunity to join the Lancaster Connects community. We'll connect you um, as a volunteer uh, to local nonprofit organizations. Um, but yeah, you'll uh, potentially win a $25 gift card to a great restaurant uh, here in Lancaster County. Yep, that's right. And all of the info and links, uh, again, for the show are available on the website via and via email each week. Again, you'll get on that email list. You'll learn about the show. Go to LancasterConnects.com and subscribe to our weekly uh, email update with all of our show info. So again, congrats to Deborah and Ed on the discussion. Guess we're at the end of the episode. Hopefully this was a fun one for you, even as you sat and listened. Uh, we always kind of like to wrap up. What do you love about the area? <laughs> There's Linda. Linda just gave a thumbs up. She's like, I love this show. <laughs> I do love this show. I do. You guys crack me up. <laughs> good. Yeah. Well, good. We've uh, entertained one person at yes, least. Yes, yes. It's uh, that's 100% <laughs> more than last episode. Oh. No, we really have a lot of listeners. We do. Yeah. I get I get people like all over saying, like I would have no 
I didn't know they knew about the show and they're reaching out like, hey, I saw your podcast. I'm like, oh, that's that's yeah. pretty cool. Yeah. Didn't know you knew about it. So, Linda, what do you love? Uh, why do you love Lancaster? What What do you love about the area here? Well, I didn't grow up here. I actually grew up in northern PA uh, when I when I did move here after college in the early 80s. It still makes me 30, just so you know. Um, mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. Yeah. I love no the diversity there. here. Yeah, I love the diversity, but um, having worked in a community and, and being a real active part of Lancaster community, I love how the community gives back and supports its own. Um, there's what's not to love about Lancaster community. Seriously. That's awesome. Yep. <clears throat> yep. Yeah, that we see that, you know, once a year at the extra give, it, it always is a surprising moment yes. to see. The, the you know giving is every day whether that's money or time but that one day is always kind of a neat refreshing day to focus on it john what about you why do you love lancaster um well unlike linda i've lived here my whole life so i've i've never really left for for any length of time um one thing i like about lancaster is we have charcuterie boards uh unlike boyertown evidently they don't have uh <laughs> charcuterie board. <laughs> thank you um, thank you but, but i will uh, i will um, ditto everything I that, take that <laughs> linda said about the diversity and everything but uh one of the other great things about lancaster is how centrally located it is i mean you can get to baltimore you can get to philly you can get to new york um mm-hmm. you know even pittsburgh's just a, a long drive across the state but um it, it's just an awesome area of you know, whatever. It's very connected I mean, it's, to other things, right? Directional ease yes. is, I think, the way you were going yes. there. <laughs> sure. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. I mean, listen, yeah, it is neat. You've got the train station. You can get in Philadelphia and New York pretty quick. Um, so, yeah. I mean, this area is pretty neat. We enjoy it. We enjoy the community. That's why we do the show. Linda, um, yeah, as Simon says, it's not Delaware. Um but uh, at any way, uh, Linda and John, thank you so much for uh, being on the show. I think. Thank you. I think we're done. Line 96 says that's a wrap. We're there. Thank you for joining us on this episode of Lancaster Connects. Go to helpthefight.org. Support everything Linda and her team are doing there. And uh, John, thank you for nominating Linda. Thanks for tuning into this episode. We'll see you next week. Super Cereal.